Currently, uh, the vision of the Allard Hereditary Breast and Ovarian Cancer Clinic is to serve women in a preventative health manner. So where there is a um, history, a family history of breast or ov ovarian cancer, this is an example where the focus really is on patients. January 2013, I was 38 weeks pregnant with my second child, so my daughter. My husband and I were so excited getting ready and um, when my obstetrician called me with, with the bad news, it was, a, it was a horrible, horrible day. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, with a triple negative breast cancer. The words cannot even describe how, just how horrific it, it really was. As if that wasn't bad enough, it was two weeks prior to my diagnosis, my mother was told that she had cancer, and it wasn't until two weeks after I got my official diagnosis when she went to the cross and they had diagnosed her with primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. So that cancer and of course the type of breast cancer that I had are two hallmarks of a hereditary cancer. When I found out I had the ovarian cancer, at first I was numb and then you go through why me and the crying and the fact that your lifespan is shortened is really difficult because <laughs> um, you know you're not going to be around for your kids or your grandkids. We're a family of four girls, so we've always been very, very close. Even though um, there's a huge age difference between myself and my youngest sister, we're all very close. And for my sister at age 34 to be diagnosed with breast cancer when she was eight months pregnant, it, yeah, it, I can't even explain how devastating it was. Well, I didn't start visiting the Allard um, Hereditary Breast and Ovarian Cancer Clinic until after I was uh, finished my cancer treatments. I've been there roughly three times so far, and each time it's been uh, a really, really good experience. You're looked after by a team of healthcare professionals that are experts in the field of hereditary breast and ovarian cancers, and they also fully understand the anxiety that is attached to carrying one of these genetic mutations. It's the lifeline, really, because we know we've got the support, and we know we've got the testing that we need, we know we've got the doctors that are specialized in their fields that know what they're looking for, and I certainly hope that there'll be more publicity as to what they're doing so that more people will get involved and I think they need to do a lot more fundraising some in one way or another um, to support it. We're actually finding teeny tiny little cancers in the fallopian tubes often at the very end here. Our job I think is to educate patients so that they know what their options are, uh, they know what their level of risk is as best as we're able to tell them. Oh, I'm very proud to work at this clinic. Patients come and are very happy that they have a place to go to. And a lot of them say, you know, I come here for my checkup and then I just, I don't worry about it. Until I come back, get checked, I don't have to worry about it in between. This is one of the most rewarding things that I do. Because I have the sense that out of every three operations that I do, I'm preventing an ovarian cancer in a young woman. Dr. Capstick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's one of the challenges with um, these gynecologic cancers, even if it's not hereditary, is that it's usually diagnosed at late stages. 75% of women have advanced cancer when they're diagnosed, and the majority of them die of their disease. So to make this clinic the clinic that it should be, the community support is essential. I was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was uh, 40 and my mother had died of ovarian cancer. So after I finished my treatment, my oncologist suggested that I be tested for the hereditary predisposition, which I didn't even know existed. And they were positive. At that point, my older daughter was tested and she was deemed uh, hereditary as well. It's devastating as a mom to see that, that ultimately you're responsible for what your children have. You know, they receive this predisposition from me. So to watch one suffer and die and leave a grandchild without a mother, and then to watch the other one be facing major surgery at 24, there are just no words to describe it. Watching my sister lose her battle to cancer was 
was terrible. She was a fighter and she was such a huge advocate for us hereditary girls. Such a spokeswoman. And I mean, she was my older sister. She was my everything. Watching Leanne go through cancer was disturbing. It's something I hope nobody ever has to go through. And for Abby, my granddaughter, I, I want her to be immune from all of this. When I found out I had the gene, I was 19. And by the time I was 22, that's when I first visited the clinic. And honestly, it was very scary. And I knew right away that when finding out that I had the gene, that that would mean eventual big surgery. Uh, going to the clinic and seeing Dr. Dabbs was comforting. She made me feel reassured that I was okay until the surgery was going to happen and that the surgery was going to happen sooner rather than later. This is an important cause to me because uh, I know people who have um, the HBox syndrome and uh, it's also personal to us because uh, a very close family friend of ours passed away a few months ago from um, this gene and she never knew she had it until it was too late. The future, I would hope, would continue to expand their programs and um, be available to more patients. And um, currently they're not operating to full capacity because of funding um, limitations. So we'd like to see that improved and, and operating at full capacity. I think that Lois Hole was a very caring and compassionate person and I also think she was a very pragmatic, frank woman and I think she would say this is awesome that we have this clinic but why is it only running half a day a week? We need to do more. On behalf of myself and my daughter Janine and my granddaughter Abby, I am just overwhelmed that this cause has been chosen and that these doctors have come together to create this fabulous clinic. And I truly believe had the Allard Clinic been in operation when Leanne was diagnosed and sick, that the outcome very well may have been different for her.